It is freeze week in New York, so I feel like there's a lot of great shows going on right now. And we're gonna poke around Chelsea today, starting with Pace Gallery. And this is a really special exhibit that highlights a story that's not often told in art history, or at least not one that I ever learned about when I studied art history. And if you have studied art history, you've probably heard of Klaus Oldenburg, who is a famous pop artist known for creating soft sculptures like deflated armchairs. However, what I haven't heard much about and what this exhibit talks about specifically is the 30 year period that Klaus Oldenburg spent collaborating and creating art with his wife, who he married in 1977. And she was a curator and an art historian, and her name was Kushi van Bruggen. And according to Pace, they created sculpture, drawings, performances, and these colossal monuments that transform the familiar into the unexpected. And the exhibit continues on the top floor gallery space, which features some of the performance work that Klaus and Kushi did, particularly this one performance in Venice, Italy, that was commissioned, conceived, and realized together with the writer Germano Salent and the architect Frank Geary, who I really love and admire. Definitely a star-studded crew. And Frank Geary actually wore this brown suit over here in the corner. These are a few images of the performance. And yeah, here's an up close of, uh, of the suit. We also got lucky today that the terrace at Pace was actually open and that we were able to come out and enjoy the view and the fresh air. And honestly, these are just some of the most amazing views in all of Chelsea. I, I love it up here.
Next stop, we headed one block over to Jack Shaman Gallery to see this exhibit by Richard Moss. And I know I've stated before that I'm not usually a big fan of photography, but I've really enjoyed this exhibit. These are a series of photographic maps which describe sites of environmental crimes unfolding across Brazil's arc of fire. And there's this tension that's like present in these works because you can't help but notice these beautiful, vibrant colors. But there's something about seeing them cast on a natural landscape like this that just feels very wrong. And Moss created these works using geographic information system technology, which utilizes a drone to capture thousands of images above a given location in order to highlight areas of environmental attrition. And scientists can use these images to figure out where in an ecosystem there may be fragility due to pollution or deforestation. But companies can also use these images to exploit ecosystems of their natural resources. And Moss uses these images to create an aesthetic narrative about these ecosystems that really tells a story that humans may initially overlook. The next stop of the day is a very trippy exhibit at Lehman Maupin Gallery featuring the works of Shirazeh Hushari. And Shirazeh Hushari is a London-based Iranian artist who uses painting, sculpture, and animation to really challenge users' views of perception of time, space, and materiality. And her paintings and sculptures are almost dreamlike. They kind of put you into this visual trance with their repetition. And from far away, her paintings appear to be just purely abstract. But when you get closer, you realize that her abstract forms are actually composed of a lot of detail and Arabic wording. And she uses the opposing Arabic phrases in her works, I am and I am not, which is meant to represent focused and unfocused states.
Next, we headed over to 303 Gallery to see Dan Graham's exhibit. And honestly, it kind of felt like an adult funhouse. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, I could not stop laughing in this exhibit. I just felt like a little kid. Um, and this exhibit is titled Three Models, Three Sizes, Three Price Ranges. And Graham set up the space to resemble the likes of a car showroom where the viewer can also become the participant. And he states that in my own work, walking around is important because not only do you see yourself in the reflection, but you also see other people seeing each other as you see them. Which I think you get a nice sort of representation of in this video. And Graham also talks a little bit about these glass pavilions and why he uses them. He says, my use of two-way mirror glass in pavilions is not a critique of the alienation of the corporate building. In many ways, the work I do tries to create a kind of pleasure area in relationship to the corporate office building. My wish being to create a kind of heterotopia. And I think he certainly achieved that. We, I know we had a great time. <laughs> And this is the project room at 303 Gallery, and on view right now are these works by Hans Peter Feldman, whose signature is collecting and organizing images and making them his own by adding these special touches, like a red clown nose. And he does this in order to prompt us as the viewers to question our notions of beauty. All right, we're now gonna head down to the lower part of Chelsea to see Vito Schnabel Gallery and Petzl Gallery, but we're gonna stop at Vito Schnabel's brand new Chelsea space first. If you saw my last video where I feature Robert Nava's solo exhibit here, oh, I just love this space so much. And this is an exhibit by Francesco Clemente and it features nine paintings that are inspired by Homer's Iliad. And if you're not familiar with the Iliad, I know high school was a long time ago for some of us, but it is a story about the Trojan War featuring a character named Achilles, who is supposedly the greatest warrior in the world. And each painting is actually of a Corinthian helmet, which is a classic part of ancient Greek culture, as well as it features a line from the Iliad. And these works are meant to really speak to the timelessness of things like fate and glory, power, violence, illusion, and virtue, and how they're forces that are shaping 
human culture and connecting its past to its present. So very, very powerful exhibit. I also love how the work sort of gets smaller as you walk towards the back and it starts with this really massive one right in front. So I know today has consisted of pretty intense exhibits and honestly this one is no exception. <laughs> Simon Denny's exhibit at Petzl titled Mine was a multi-year project for the artist that explores the themes of technology, labor, and our relationship with the earth. And Denny has been developing these works since 2016. This work in particular is created by the patent applications that Amazon submitted in 2019 for drones to replace delivery workers. And it really speaks to the key themes in this exhibit, which are the interconnections between data mining, mineral mining, and the mechanization of labor. And throughout these works, Simon is asking the questions, what happens as the labor force shrinks in these traditional industries? How will individuals and worker communities dialogue with those in power in the future? And where will the leverage they once brought now come from?
As always, thanks for coming along with me. And if you haven't subscribed yet, just click the little subscribe button and it'll keep you up to date with every time I put out a new video. This is particularly important for this week because it is freeze week. This is the first in-person art fair and I will be filming it. So yeah, keep an eye out for that video and let me know which one was your favorite exhibit and why in the comments below. Thanks again. See you guys next time.